Hello and welcome back. Have you ever wondered how to generate a barcode for a product SKU value in your shape on list? Or perhaps you are keen to create a QR code for the link field in shape on list. Well, you are in the right place. In today's video, I'm going to reveal the secrets of effortlessly achieving both using Power Automate and a free to use open API source. Before diving into how to generate barcodes using Power Automate and this open API source, let's explore an out of the box method. The limitation of this approach is that it does not allow you to input a specific ID or SKU value to create a barcode. Instead, it automatically generates a unique ID and a barcode for you. So to enable this out of the box feature to generate barcode for shape on list record, First, you need to click on the setting gear icon and then you need to go to site content and from the site content page, we need to navigate to site settings page. Make sure you are a site collection administrator, otherwise you won't see these options. So you need to navigate next to site collection features. So the feature we're looking to activate is in place record management. So this is the feature on the right hand side, I will click on activate button. Now you can see the in place record management feature is activated from the left hand menu. I will go back to our product list. I've created some fields here, the SKU, the barcode image, product link and the link QR code. The idea is that whenever I add a SKU value here, it generates a barcode and whenever I create a product link here, it should generate a QR code here. So this we will do with the power automate flow, but let's check the out of the box option first. I need to go to the setting icon and navigate to the list settings. I need to click information management policy settings and then I need to select item option from the content type. From the policy setting page, I need to enable the barcode. So I will enable that. This will refresh the page and then I will select OK. Items view and I will click on edit current view. You will see there are two more columns available to add barcode and barcode value. So I will select both. So both columns are added into the view. I will go ahead and create a new item. I will just call it KitKat and then I will give it a, a random SKU value here and click on save. Now you can see it has generated a barcode with a value, but the barcode is not generated based on this SKU value here. So this out of the box option only work when it generates a value itself and also the barcode. But what if I need to generate a barcode based on this SKU value? We need to use the Power Automate flow. So let me hide these two columns for now. So barcode and barcode value, I will hide these columns from the view. Now the next option is creating Power Automate to take the SKU value and generate a barcode and then take the product link and generate a QR code. So first we need to look at the open API which we can use to generate these barcode and QR code. So that is called barcodeapi.org. You can see that you can choose different type of barcodes or you can leave it as auto for it to determine which is the best barcode for you. So for example, you can click on Royal Mail. It will create a Royal Mail style barcode for you or you want to create a code 39 type barcode, then you can use the code 39 option. So for us, because we want it to determine barcode itself, we will use the auto option. Also, you can use this to generate barcode in bulk. So if I click on the bulk barcode generator, you can choose a CSV file, for example, and generate barcode. Let's go to make.powerautomate.com. From the left hand menu, I will click on create. I will create an automated cloud flow because we want this flow to run as soon as an item is created in a SharePoint list. The name of the flow, we'll call it product barcode. And the trigger for this flow will be when an item is created in a SharePoint list, for example, and then I will click on create. I will click on the trigger and I will configure the site address. So the site address is sales team and the list name is products. 
So we'll select the product list. So our trigger is configured properly. Next, we need to send an HTTP request to this barcode api.org site. So I will click on plus sign here, add an action. From the left hand menu, I will start typing HTTP. So we need the HTTP action. So I will click on that. So for the URL, I will type in barcode api.org api forward slash auto. If you want to generate a specific type of barcode, you can change this auto to that value, but I will leave it as auto and forward slash. And then I need to provide the SKU value from that list, which is here. So for the product list, we need to provide the SKU value to this API to generate the barcode. So I will go back to the Power Automate and I will add a dynamic value here. And then from when an item is created, I will select the SKU value here. The method is going to be the get because we want to get the barcode from this API. And that's it. We don't need to configure anything else. So this HTTP response will be an image of that barcode. We need to save this image into a document library in SharePoint. And then from there, we will take this image and add it to the image type field in a SharePoint list. So for that purpose, I've created an image processing document library on the same site. But just make sure that every time you create an image here, it has a unique value. So for that, I will create a variable and generate a unique value for the file name. And then we will add file to this document library. So I will add a variable just after the trigger. So I will click on add an action, initialize variable. The name of the variable is file name and the type is string and the value, I can provide this a value dynamically. The ID of that item underscore barcode dot PNG. So that will be the name of our file with extension. So every time the ID is going to be unique, so it will make sure that it creates a unique file every time. Now let's go ahead and create a file based on this HTTP response. I will click on plus add an action. I will select create file action of SharePoint. I will select the site name, which is the sales team site and the folder path. If I click on this folder icon, I will select the image processing library file name as we created that variable already with the unique value i will give that variable to this file name property so the variable file name will be added here and the file content this will be the output from this http response so if i click on the dynamic value i will select the body of that http response okay so this will create a file in the image processing library with the barcode now to add that barcode image file from the document library into an image type column in a SharePoint list, we need to send an HTTP request. We cannot use SharePoint update action to update an image column. So if I click on the plus icon here, add an action, I will search for send an HTTP request to SharePoint action. I will select that and I will select the sales team site and the method I will choose post and in the URI, I will add this underscore API web list get by title and the name of the list in SharePoint and then items and inside these brackets, I will add a dynamic value of that item ID. So when an item was created, ID of that item. Next, I will click on show all. We need to provide some header parameters here. So content type is our first parameter and then this is the value. And then we will have a second parameter except that will have the same value as content type and then we will have our third parameter and the value for this is going to be merge and the last parameter is if match and the value for this is going to be asterisk now in the body of this we will provide this information so let's go through this so first thing we need to provide is product list item this is the name of our sharepoint list where we are trying to update that image column. So if I go back, this is the list name products and the barcode image is actually the field name in a SharePoint list, which is of image type. 
So if I go back to the SharePoint list, you can see the barcode image field. You need to make sure that you change it to your column name. So barcode image here and also the barcode image column here as well. So at two places you need to change this column name. Next, we need to provide the file name. So we need the name of the image without file extension here. But if we go back to this variable where we have initialized it, it is coming up with the file extension as well. But for this HTTP code here, we need to provide the image name without extension. So for that, we can just create another variable. I will do right click here and copy action. And then I will go on plus sign and paste an action here. And then this file name, we can call it file name node extension. And then we can just remove .png from here. So now we have a two variable, one with the file name with extension and one without extension. So if I navigate back to our HTTP code, instead of this barcode value, I will remove that. And then I will add the dynamic value file name, no extension. Next, you need to provide the tenant name here. So the HTTPS, whatever your tenant name is, .sharepoint.com and then here you need to provide the URL of that image. So we have a site which is called sales team and inside that site we have image processing document library and inside that we are expecting the image but not with this name. Let me go back and then remove this. I need to add an image name which we have created in our initialized variable image name with extension. So I will add a dynamic value and we will use this file name. So just to recap that here you will provide list name where the image column exists and then here you will provide the name of that image column and also you will do the same here. So in two places you have to update the name of that image column and then here you will provide the file name without extension. You will then need to provide your tenant name here dot sharepoint.com and then finally you need to provide the location of that barcode image in the document library. So in this case it was sales team image processing and then file name with extension variable. Okay so with this step we have completed the flow. I will click on save. The flow saved successfully. If I go back to the product list and I will create a new item. I will click on new item and for example I type Mars and the SKU value I will just give a random SKU value and then I will click on save. Hey everyone if you're finding this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tech tips and tutorials. So let's navigate back to the image processing library. We can see the image is created with the ID 11 underscore barcode.png. If I click on that we can see a barcode is generated in this file. If I close that and if I go back to the product list and if I refresh this page, now you can see a barcode image is generated based on that SKU value we have provided. So this is working perfectly fine. Now let's change this flow a little bit to generate a link QR code based on a product link for example. So if I go back to the same flow, there are only minor changes required in the flow for it to work with the QR code. So if I go back to edit this flow, first thing we need to change in this flow is the HTTP request. So instead of the SKU value, we will provide the URL. So we will select the dynamic content and then the product link. So that's the value we will provide and we are saying this API to automatically determine what type of code you need to generate. Okay, we won't change anything else in terms of how it's creating file, but we need to change the HTTP request to SharePoint. So we are using the same product list, but this time instead of updating the barcode image column, if I navigate back and show you column name is link QR. So if I go back to the flow, I will change it to link QR. I also need to make that change here. I will change it to link QR and that's it. So this time when the HTTP request will be sent, it will be auto determined because we are providing a link. So it knows that it doesn't have to create a barcode. Instead, you need to create a QR code. 
So I will click on save. Let's create a new item. This time we are not expecting it to generate a barcode image, but we are expecting it to generate a QR code based on a link. So let's create a new item. Let's call it Kinder. And then we don't need to provide SKU value because we are testing the QR code. So I will provide the URL here. I will call it Kinder.com and then I will click on save. All right. So if I go to image processing folder, I can see a new image is created. If I click on it, it is actually a QR code for that link. Now, if I go back to the product list and click refresh, now you can see the QR code is generated and I've tested it with my phone. It is actually taking me to the kinder.com website. I hope you found this tutorial of generating barcodes and QR codes in SharePoint list using Power Automate Flow super helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome content. Until next time, happy automating.